very good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us here for our, our, one of our last two sessions before uh, our coffee break. But um, really good that you're here. And what I think it'd be useful is to hear from uh, Steve Joyce, President and CEO of Choice International. You're new to the territory. You're new to this region. So let's just find out a little bit about you know, where you've come from uh, with your background, you know, have you always been in the hotel industry and just show us your career path? Yeah, so I'm actually not new to the region. I am with Choice. So um, I was longtime uh, Marriott person, so 26 years. I ended up being the global head of development. So I did a lot of the work um, through several of the folks that are here um, in this region, uh, mostly at the upper end. Um, and so coming back now is really interesting because to see the development of the markets and particularly see the growth of the middle class, um, the travelers here that are looking for quality moderate tier, um, we think the timing's finally right for a company like Choice to come in in a fairly significant way and establish a strong moderate tier lodging component which is purpose built, value oriented, but high quality. And so we've put together a group of partners that we think really create a great opportunity um, here and in Saudi, um, and then we think other areas in the region uh, for, for a strong, moderate-tier um, program that meets the needs of the traveler, but of, at a value orientation that provides what they need. A first-rate, five-star bed and room experience, but then a but then a simple but high quality breakfast that is complimentary, complimentary Wi-Fi and in a lot of places complimentary parking and, and that represents a value to families and to those travelers looking for an experience that represents quality but doesn't necessarily give them lots of frills that they don't want. And historically, if you look at this region and what people considered modern tier, they kind of pull the chandelier and pull the marble yeah. and they don't change the operating model. Well, our operating model is there should be 20 to 25 employees in the hotel. It should run very high margins. It should be relatively low capex to get in, relatively high margin production, and low cost to operate, but at the same time satisfy the guest needs in a way that isn't being done currently. And that, if you look at choice, I mean, we're just almost 7,000 hotels. So you're what, around the fifth largest? Fifth hotel. largest. And so, but if you look at what we are, we represent what we like to say the 99%. So we have brands from upper economy to upper upscale. And, but in each case, it represents value across the globe. Um, the brands that we're bringing here, we think that are gonna work really well is, we think there's real opportunity for Clarion, which is our four to five star, real opportunity for quality, which is a, a um, three to four star opportunity with food and beverage, but limited. And then where we think there's a real opportunity is comfort, which is a, uh, you know, a lodging product, which is f select service focused, provides a breakfast, a quality bedding. Um, the rooms are gonna be good sized. They fit families, whether if it's, a if it's a comfort suite or a comfort inn and suites, the suites are outstanding for families because they have, they're gonna get a double-double with a pull-out couch and it provides real value for those families that are traveling either for religious or religious purposes or leisure or destination or business as well. And so we just think the timing's right. Uh, this is our expertise. So you've got, um, you've, you're a franchise company, so you've signed a master uh, development agreement yep. um, for Saudi. You've got four hotels now in Saudi. Yeah, yeah, we've got, the pipeline now is about seven um, signing committed. Uh, there's probably, uh, a total of 15 that we've got control of sites and, and real projects, and a total pipeline of 25 to 30 at this point, which is pretty good considering we just put the relationship together a little, just a year ago, actually, that's right now. Fantastic, yeah. And, yeah. and that's with Equinox? Equinox and CHME. Okay, all right. So. Very good. So in this region, then, where do you see, given your background, I, didn't, I, I knew you had an experience in this region, but in terms of choice coming into this market, but with your experience in this region, where do you see the hot markets for this product, so, or particularly for comfort? Yeah, so uh, the, the two target markets we've outlined is, is the, the UAE, and then in particularly in Saudi. And so, and what we see is, like in Saudi, 15 market sub-markets 
that are clearly in need of quality moderate tier lodging where you have a strong middle class that is doing all the things we're all accustomed to. Selling insurance, selling computers, selling whatever's required to service the various industries in those markets. Um, and, and those travelers and the leisure travelers do not have a great option today. They tend to have old five stars that haven't been reconditioned. And what they really want is a simple but high quality rooms experience with a free value oriented breakfast um, and then they're on their way because they're not doing anything in the hotel. They're there to either, either experience um, a beach or a or a, or a pilgrimage or or they're doing business on their regular route. And that's what we're looking to provide is that lodging because that has been slow in coming. The market has now developed. There is an unmet need, and we think that that with the right product and the right partners, which we think we put together, we think this can actually be a pretty exciting opportunity. No, I'm, sh I'm sure it will be. Um, to me, it seems like you're more of a technology company yeah. than a hotel company. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's the same thing. thing. I mean, you know, I'm an old, I'm an old developer, broken down franchise sales guy, and so the fact that I bought two, two software companies in the last two years is sort of an interesting change for me. But the reality is the business has moved from getting the operations right, that's expected, and now it's all about the distribution environment. And it is fraught with opportunity and fraught with peril. Choice has been at the very leading edge of that. We were the first with an iPhone app. You know, we're the first with a fully cloud-based property management system and reservation system. We're developing the first truly new massive reservation system that's been done in the industry in 40 years. Everybody else, including Choice up to this point, is on a 40-year-old platform. So you're going to get rid of that legacy We're system. We're getting rid of that entire legacy system. It is going to allow us uh, to be much easier in terms of a lot of things that the, the U.S.-based lodging companies have been lacking, language capability, you know, alphabet capability, the ability to move in quickly, and low cost of installation because there's nothing required on property. You, you have a server, you have access to the internet, you have access to all of our systems. And so as a result, we think the combination of the technology we provide, the, the power of the choice system and the distribution channels that we do, I mean, you know, typically across the planet, we're putting anywhere between 35 and 60%, depending on the market, of the guests in a hotel that are coming from us, that are our proprietary guests, which is the cheapest channel for those owners. So obviously in, in this market, we're gonna have to establish ourselves, although people know our brands here because they visit the US. Sure. And so as a result, we think we've got a natural combination of interest, customer desire, we think the segment's big enough, and we think there's a real opportunity. Yeah, and then there's the flexibility as well of selling the room for not just that 24 hour period. You can sell it in chunks as well, a four hour period, exactly. which are these new products that are coming into the market at the moment. Yeah, and the difficulty for the standard lodging company is the technology platform, the reservation system that they're utilizing isn't equipped to do that. Yeah. So it, there, there's lots of workarounds, which means lots of people get checked into rooms where people are occupied. So with our reservation system, it's gonna allow us to sell time so of day. This, when are you launching this? It's, it's, it's active now. So, okay. so we're in the process of shifting from the old to the new and we'll be done most of our reservation volume will be on the new system by late summer. Okay. Um, and so, and it just provides an enormous, totally different set of capabilities in terms of the types of reservations we can take, the ability to sell dynamic packages, the ability to um, sell uh, parts a day, and just whatever you want to do, this system allows you to do it relatively easily. And how are you competing with the OTAs? Huh. Well, uh, in several ways. One is, um, and the piece that is the most annoying, and, it's, it's, and it really is prevalent because they are so ubiquitous in their advertising, is they have convinced the traveling public that the lowest rates are available on their sites, which is wrong. It's patently false yep. that the best rates are available on choicehotels.com. And so what we've done, because our contracts allow this, and we're having active discussions with them. And we, look, they're an important channel for us. I mean, they, they generate a lot of business for us. We'd like them to do it at a better value for our owners. And so therein lies the discussion. And so, but for us, 
what we're doing is we are offering to our privileged members, which there are 30 million strong, it's the number one rated program um, uh, in the industry, and what we're doing is we're offering discounts to those loyal customers that aren't available on OTA sites. They're not terribly happy about it. We have the right to do it, and we're going to continue to do it, and we're seeing customers moving to a lower cost channel for our owners as a result. Mm. I think it's also about uh, trust, isn't it, and transparency on your website, because yeah. if you can showcase that you're actually the same price as the OTAs, people are going to prefer to book direct anyway, instead of searching around the web for 17 different sites to eventually book. Which is exactly what they do, because they yeah. look at our, they're on our site, they'll go out and they'll check, it literally is close to 17 sites, yeah. and then they'll come back and book. Um, and so what we're doing is we actually are looking carefully at doing a comparative pricing well, there's a company like of uh, Meta. that are doing it. Yeah, right now. and so and so we we're, we have relationships with most of the Meta channels, and you know, and so it's it's a lot easier for them to go to one Meta site and see, okay, here are my options. Okay, I wanted the choice product in the first place, and yes, it's the right value for me. So now I'm going to go back and book it. So it is, but you know, for the first time in a long time, our proprietary channels are growing faster than the OTAs. That had been a five-year trend going the wrong direction. It has now reversed, oh and so we're pretty excited about it. They're not, and so yeah. we're having conversations. Listen, we've got about five minutes left. Let's just quickly hone in on some of the uh, things you do outside of your business life, like uh, the Squawk Box on CNN, which sounds like a lot of fun. You often are on CNN, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. So what are you talking about? What are you telling your uh, viewers? Well, we clearly part of it is to talk about the company, but, um, but we're also trying to get out and educate both investors and consumers about various issues facing the hotel company. So, for example, one of the things that we'll be talking about, I'll be up there next week doing it again, one of the things we're going to talk about is how, how difficult it is when the administration starts looking at isolated travel bans and what it does to sentiment about visiting the U.S., what it does to U.S. exports, what it does to U.S. jobs, and what it does to the international sentiment about is the United States a place that's welcoming or not? And so we were one of the, well, actually, we were the only hotel company that when the president came out with his policy, we wrote a letter to him and said, we're not sure if you understand all the implications, but here's some of the things you might want to think about. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the individual countries that you're banning. It's about the attitude that it sets. And look, the U.S. needs international travelers. We, we shut our borders after 9-11. We lost a third of our market share of international travelers. In the meantime, international travel has skyrocketed. So the U.S. could have taken advantage and done a lot better in terms of its overall performance within the world economy, but we didn't. And so, so what we want to do is continue to talk to the public about it, but also working legislative channels, trying to get a more reasonable, balanced policy that it, that. No one's said, suggesting that we should take any risk, which we're not. The issue is, it's how you approach it, how you talk about various international constituencies visiting the U.S. and, and making them feel welcome and desired because, you know, quite frankly, Europe has done a great job of that and Europe is, has been winning that battle. Mm. And so, you know, our view is, like, this is important to the country, it's important to the economy, and then it also creates a better level of understanding amongst different regions of the world. And so, so, we'll, so we'll continue to push those issues. We will continue to talk about um, why OTAs aren't necessarily your best choice. Uh, and we'll continue to talk about the company and the types of things we're trying to do. Um, but it's, a, you know, it's an interesting, the, the hotel business has transformed significantly over the five, last five years, and it will do that again in the next five, Airbnb, you know, the shared economy approaches. The, the very significant changes in the, in the technology and the distribution channels. What do you think channels. is next? I think you're going to see a uh, more highly fragmented level of, of new entrants in, non-traditional competitors. So I don't worry about Expedia and Amadeus. I worry about what Google's going to do. I worry about, although Amazon got into the business and got back out, I worry about if they decide to do it, if Apple, because it's, you know, you, Knowing your traditional competitors and knowing how you stack up against them, that's something that you do. That we've always done. But I think it's the non-traditional competitors that are going to make the next five years really interesting. You know, and we're, you know, I'm a big Andy Grove fan. Only the Paranoids survive. 
And so as a result, you need to be looking all the time at who is looking to get between you and your customer mm -hmm. and make sure they don't. And at the same time, those represent opportunities which you need to take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Now we've got uh, just a few seconds left, but tell us about that TV program you were on. Uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> sorry, so for those of you saw, who saw it, I apologize. I was on the show called Undercover Boss, which was a British show they brought to the US. And the one comment that I made to, a, you know, to an interviewer who said, so what do you think? I go, well, I've only seen it once. And look, I don't take myself very seriously, and I was prepared to look bad. I just wasn't prepared to look as bad as I looked. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it was an amazing thing. We were the lead show in the opener, 20 million initial viewers, and we got, um, literally, it's been repeated ever since. It was a 2010 show. It's, you know, we still get letters every week from people that have seen the show for the first and time. And you were behind the scenes, weren't you? I was, yeah, and I worked the jobs, Didn't and I was really that. bad at them, and everybody yeah. thought that was really funny, and I sweated yeah. a lot. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but, my, but our chairman, who owns, the family owns 40-some percent of the company, said, well, wait a minute, wait, wait, we're the, we're the number one show in the opening season? I'm like, yeah. He goes, so what's that? I go, 20 million viewers. He goes, so 20 million plus repeats, that's 80, 90 million viewers in, in total? I go, yeah, probably. He goes, and then on the internet, and then pre-publicity? He goes, this got to be worth $100 million of free publicity. We yeah, go, yeah. we think it's worth more than 160. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, and all we're risking is your dignity? He goes, <laughs> I am all over this. So, and it was amazing. Stock price went up, res volume went up 14%. So what's your next gig? I'm, I'm done. I'm <laughs> I got no groupies, I got no offers from Hollywood, I got nothing. So I'm, I'm, I am a retired reality TV participant. Participant. Well done. Well, on that note, Steve, thank you so much. Please Pleasure. show your appreciation to Steve Joyce. <laughs>